All right, so last time that you were on the show, you didn't have a very good dog, which was very disappointing because we had to kick you off before this segment. But I know, I today you have one. I so do. So you can stay. And not only that, Thank you, you can lead off. Okay. Um, I My very good dog, so I'm going out on a limb on my first time, so this will determine how... Uh, you never get to do it again. Yeah, how long it takes for me <laughs> to get back on here. Um, <laughs> is UMass against BYU. Which you can watch live on Flow Football. Wow. Yes, and that's unrelated. Wow. You know, I'm not saying that you had to sign up and watch it on Flow Football on Saturday but exclusively. If you did, I wouldn't hate it. Exactly. Uh, Thirteen and a half point underdogs. BYU is skidding, and dude, UMass can score. Um, they can, no question. Marquise Young is. I think Marquise Young is a guy that's going to play at the next level. Really? I really do. He is a complete back, and not only is he. I think Marquise Young has a I think he has a path to becoming like a quality third down back in the NFL because yeah. if you watch UMass, they do a lot with him out of the backfield. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Marquise Young is a guy that I love Andy Isabella too. Yeah, Andy Isabella, all five foot three of him. Yeah. That, <laughs> but he's a baller. He is a baller, no question. So yeah, no, I love that pick. Yeah, I mean yeah, I like it. I mean they also throw the ball they throw it for more than three hundred yards a game. Mm-hmm. BYU hasn't scored much recently and is, again, skidding. Ever since they played Wisconsin, really, they um, haven't played well. Coming off a um, disheartening, I guess is the best way to put it, disheartening loss to Boise State, a team that they go back and forth with. Um, so, yeah, give me UMass. Zoom ass. How about a, a body clock game? That game's uh, noon kickoff. East Coast time, also so that's known as uh, 10 a.m. Exactly. The locals back in, in Salt Lake City. That's oh, right. that's right. Okay. So Body Provo, clock game. Not Salt Lake. Sorry. Provo. Yeah, Utah's in Salt Lake, right? Yeah, they'll probably oh. fight you for that. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, body clock game. Yeah, that's Live right. Live on flow football. And wow, you can't beat that. I mean, what's mm-hmm. better? Marquise Young, Andy Isabella. We got all the things. Tune you never in. know who UMass is going to play at quarterback because they've literally played Revolving three guys door, this year. Yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, I might just go ahead and yeah. go up there and play quarterback for that one. It adds up to a lot of yards. Um, I feel like we got to save you for last because, you know, like best for last and everything. And I've been having a real rough time lately. You have. You need to get back on the winning track. Yeah. So I mentioned this. It's not really fair to me, though. Kellen Mond ruined my life uh, on Saturday. That, that was unreal. I was I was gloating. Like, I, I was so happy. Like, I already had my message to you, like, yeah, typed yeah. out, like, <laughs> how I'm back on the winning track. Yeah. And then I don't even really know what happened. I looked away, and when I came back to it, Auburn was about to score to, like, take the lead. And I, I, don't, I don't understand how that happened. I feel like, you know those little graphs that show you, like, percentage odds to win? Yeah, oh, yeah. It had to be, like, 1% for Auburn at a certain oh, point. Man. Yeah. I bet Everybody at Jordan that. Hare was about to, like, put for sale signs in Gus's front yard, <laughs> and then somehow they won the game. I was so. saying, I think there were more fans at the end of the game than there were at, like, halftime. Definitely. Somehow. Well, I, I don't know if they allow re-entry at Jordan Hare. They have to because everybody bounced, and then it was like they had their tailgates. They were like, oh, God, we're going to come back. Let's yeah. all run back in the stadium. Definitely. Anyway, having said that, I am going to get back on the winning track this week. I've got a really good one for you. Oregon. The Ducks. Three and reliable. And a half, three, yeah, not so reliable, but they're a three-and-a-half-point dog against Utah. Tyler Huntley broke his collarbone. Very sad. Tyler Huntley... Obviously the best player on the Utah offense. Without him, as soon as he went out, Arizona State rolled. Mm -hmm. You take Huntley out of that offense, it becomes very one-dimensional. So you got a one-dimensional offense coming off of a deflating loss to Arizona State where they lost not just a game, but the leader of their offense. And you got Oregon, who got absolutely stunned against Arizona. I don't have any idea what that I was. Still don't get that one. But they bounced back last week against UCLA. They're a ten point favorite. They cover easy. They win by twenty one. Maybe got a little bit of their mojo back. And listen, if I if you give me Justin Herbert as a three and a half point dog against a team with no quarterback, I'm on that all day long. I think the Ducks get back on track. So do I. Oregon, three three and a half point dogs against Utah. That's my pick. So Texas A and M win probability mm-hmm. peaked at eighty seven percent. Yeah, super. That's rough. Look at that graph. I can't get it. Ooh. But, yeah, it peaked at 87% with two minutes to go in the game. Yeah, it just drops. That's rough. The All they had to do was kick a field goal. Yep. They were driving. Mm. I'm sorry. That's not fair. I'm not going to lie. When I was watching that game and then they brought the players back on the field for the another go at it, you just almost I almost felt like they were going to drop it in there a second time they can play. Oh, wow. 89.4 is actually where it peaked. <laughs> That's about what it felt like. 
Oh man. It was one of those deals where you're like you're watching it and you're doing the math in your head and you're like, okay, if they get to 17, it's a three possession game. There's three minutes left. Mathematically, mm. it's literally almost impossible. I'll be good. Yep. And then Mon throws a pick, and all hell breaks loose, and Gus gets to stay at Auburn for one more week. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we we might, hopefully we finish the job. <laughs> man. Um, all right. All right. I've won three in a row. Going for number four. Massive which hot streak. Let's you, hear it. you won four in a row earlier this I did. year, so I'm trying and to match. You called it out and told everybody I'm sorry. about it. Well, so I'll lose this week, so just fade this. That's the spirit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna, I picked on Texas last week, and I was right, and the spread was about the same. It ended up being two points. But this spread, Texas Tech, Texas, just one and a half. Mm-hmm. Saturday night in Lubbock, back-to-back night games. The Big Twelve gives I gives Texas Tech. Can tell you that that's not a place that you want to be. No, and Lubbock ever really. But <laughs> <laughs> if you're an opposing team, <laughs> Oklahoma found themselves in a quick 14-0 hole, and uh, I don't really think it matters who plays at quarterback for Texas Tech because no. uh, it Duffy has been pretty good in, Duffy, in Duffy relief has a for. Yeah, he can run yeah. absolutely, and uh, this. Uh, Lubbock is that black hole that just like sucks defense out of everybody, <laughs> and I mean not that Texas has much to be defense to be sucked out, but they shots firing. Yeah, well, listen to this: the past three games, oh, dude, they've given up 578 yards, 502 yards, and 532 yards. And sorry, I wasn't listening to you because I was no all good. Past three games, they've given up over 500 yards. Oh, that's a lot. And over 300 yards through the air. Secondary is not good. They give 230 yards rushing to West Virginia. Um, give me Texas Tech in that offense, and Texas continues to slide. Yeah. And Tom Herman will probably find something new to cry about. Probably. Ooh. But, you know, they'll be back in the Texas Bowl. So yeah. he can, uh, can mock Drew Lock again. He can mock Drew Lock again. <laughs>